Hello everyone, I hope you enjoyed the conference and let us talk again about Camda Meta Sub Challenge. I'm going to show you the most interesting plots I have. And actually our goal was a very practical one because the Camda was announced before City Global Sampling Day operated that Meta Sub Consortium and it was a very nice opportunity to try to squeeze more out of the data and to see what other people think and how do they approach the data analysis. And each of our aim is tightly connected with the MetaSub sub-projects such as Bioinformatics Core Pipeline because when you have a lot of cities you would really want to try to analyze them in the, the same way because either way it's really hard to compare. And the second one is a very important one. It's about uniform specification scheme for data collection because like based on this data set, for example, some uh, one city reported uh, measuring the temperature inside the station, while other didn't specify how they did it. So it's really hard to compare when you don't have the specific information on the meta data you collect while you swap. And this third one, we wanted to assess the reproducibility of um, species. And uh, the last one, we wanted to investigate biodiversity versus biolocation. So we focused on Illumina high seek data only. Unfortunately, we couldn't uh, process all the New York samples. We are still doing it because it's like 1,000, a really huge amount. And uh, the first thing we did is very basic one, just to check raw data quality and as you can see well here you have an aggregated report it's basically based on fast qc when you apply multi qc uh, package it aggregates all the reports and if you see red it means that the sample didn't pass the test so and on the these plots you have you see a really insane amount of adapters like the half of the samples had it so what we did what the same as people did in the article. They just uh, trimmed using the quality score and it resulted in these plots not really much better from the previous one. Okay, we have like a quarter of the samples with adapter content, but still it is too much and you still have a lot of bad samples. And so we did it with the after QC tool which is very nice one it did a lot of stuff like checking for bubble effect and so on so in the end we had to apply additional step to remove the adapters and only after that data looks better and we had a reasonable um, sequence length distribution so well if you are going to map to different genomes, probably you will just get rid of these reads, but you will also lose the information. If you cut some of the adapters, you will still get the reads with the normal lengths, which are higher than 70 base pairs. But if you're looking for specific sequences inside the reads, I don't know, some kind of markers, if you would really want to get rid of this. And I think this is a basic step which should be performed in any kind of analysis. So we try to be very very thorough about this. And the next, so and why so many adapters left? Uh, most probably some fragments may have an insert shorter than the length of the single read, which results in the presence of adapter at the end of the read, like on this plot. So you need to be also really careful about how you prepare your library. Then we try to merge all the metadata from three different studies and we kind of divided it into innate uh, data which was collected while sampling and derived which was obtained after sequences analysis. And why this uh, last one is important I will show you on the uh, future slides and that actually helped us to create a unified collection form for global city sampling day which were used 
by meta sub participants, which really make the downstream analysis much more easier. And then we calculated OTU abundances. We used need data to to remove human DNA because it's very very nice and easy to use. And we went for a Clark tool because uh, in the original papers they used Metaflan and they wanted to check whether we will have a really different uh, result. And what we had actually. We had a lot of similar top OTU, but we also had uh, differences like, for example, the Serati amarsessans, which, which is a pathogen associated with the clinical outbreaks. So in terms of re OTU repro reproducibility, I would say um, it was reproduced at least at the 70% level, but it's not completely the same. And uh, what about the connection with the surface material and surface type? And uh, here the Boston data and the result is really expected because Boston data had a very clear correlation with with uh, surface material. But what is bad about this is actually they have um, one surface material which corresponds to one surface type and in this way it's, mm, it's like impossible to differentiate which variable is more influential in this way so if you would design your experiment you should try to collect uh, like um, your samples from uh, wooden surfaces from different types of objects like benches or maybe handrails sorry um, well here is another interesting uh, example and it is a pooled sample and you see a really high amount of phage here but all the samples that were used to pull the samples did not contain the phage which basically means it was just contaminated um, while doing sequencing that's why you really need to be precise maybe about each sample because you can easily have anything in your metagenomic profile and not because of the biological di diversity but because of uh, technical issues and uh, here's some insight on the sacramental data and what is interesting here uh, remember i told you about uh, derived metadata so well here is only viral and bacterial otu it means it is with the removed human DNA. So, but we see here two samples that had less amount of uh, human DNA, they are clustered apart. And here uh, we also have two samples that are clustered apart because they had uh, the biggest amount of known species. Uh, while the surface type and station, they don't really give us any like obvious clustering. So you can see that we can have really like different variables can influence different samples profiles. And if you look closely on Sacramento data, um, we suppose it's like interesting pattern that uh, two samples from the same station correlate, but the third one does not. And uh, for example, and we tried to look closely on the metadata people provided, and actually it made sense. Like here, for example, you see this uh, sample with the less amount of OTU, and it is not because the place was clean, it's because it rained two minutes before. So we checked also differential abundances between uh, um, east and west part of the HO station which actually uh, right in front of uh, each other and one sample was like less uh, clean and the other was like less dirty because uh, people reported a huge people uh, huge passengers traffic and the other sample was taken right after the rain and you can see that uh, abundant species are actually associated with the uh, human skin which really makes sense so you can track things even on the basis of comparing like several samples so i would like to make some conclusions um so 
it is really important not only your sequencing data but also the metadata if you want to really uh, have a good insight of what is happening in the city and uh, be really wish that all the scripts or anything done with this work will be included in some uh, SOP for bioinformatics spam plan. And it is uh, really clear that it is important to sample fewer and more controlled environments with the greater specificity and uniform coverage on meta variables, which we actually try to do. So we try to sample the same surfers for many times during the Kyiv Global City Sampling Day. And who knows, maybe some samples from our cohort will happen in the future candidate challenges. So I would like to thank people. A lot of people helped me with their good advices, interesting talks. And of course, I would like to thank the conference organizers because they provided me with the travel grant. And uh, thank you. And I will be happy to see you during the poster session. Thank you, Elena.